The St. Louis Browns finished in the second division 40 times, won their only pennant in 1944, lost the World Series in six games to their hometown rivals, the Cardinals. In 1951, things were so desperate in the city of St. Louis that a three-foot midget named Eddie Goodell made his big league appearance. The ball club eventually moved to Baltimore and opened up Memorial Stadium in 1954. You knew it wasn't the same old Browns. They beat the Chicago White Sox 3-1. to one. It was the harbinger of good things to come for the franchise known as the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles have not picked up where the Browns left off. They have been most successful. Today, they stand in the way of the California Angels. The National Broadcasting Company, now in its sixth decade of bringing you baseball's memories. Baseball's milestones. Baseball's majesty. And baseball's magical moments. Sports proudly presents the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today, from Memorial Stadium, it's the California Angels versus the Baltimore Orioles. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Gatt. Welcome to Baltimore, where the O's got well in a hurry last night, but the Angels sit atop the heap four games in front. It was interesting reading the paper. They talk about the magic is back with Baltimore because of the rally, but the Angels, uh, Bob Boone had a great story talking about we got the pitching, and that's why we're going to win, but I feel, Vin, like they're going to do it with Weaver's theory, uh, pitching defense and a three-run homer provided by Wally Joyner. And, of course, the pitching is really the emphatic area for California with people like Kirk McCaskill and Mike Witt and John Cannon. Candelari and Don Sutton. Even the fifth man is questionable. They sent Ron Romanic out. And we'll look at young Ray Chadwick today, 0-2, batting for that uh, number five slot. Well, you have to like the Angels' chances uh, because uh, another name you can bring up is Terry Forster. When he comes back, they're going to have guys that have proven themselves and down the stretch, that's what it's going to take. And meanwhile, it will take more than a little magic for Earl Weaver to get his ball club in gear. It's nine games back. They've had kind of a Baltimore shuffle lately. They have to rely on pitching, and the pitching hasn't been there. Case in point was last night with Mike Boddicker. We'll get to the starting lineups. We'll have all the pregame stats and stories all coming up right after this. Here's the way the Angels stack up offensively with Chris Burleson starting off as the DH. Then it'll be Wally Joyner at first base and Brian Downing in left field. Doug DeSensei comes home to play third base and George Hendrick will be in right field. Bobby Gritch at second, Dick Schofield the shortstop, Gary Pettis in center field, and Bob Boone behind the plate. Here's the way they line up in the outfield. It'll be Sheets, Lynn, and Dwyer. Lynn, not exactly 100%, but he says he wants to play. He's in the lineup. Rafer, they use him mostly for his bat at third base. Ripken is shortstop. Jackie Gutierrez is second base. Traber, I'm anxious to see him. Uh, really been hitting the ball. There's DeFerro behind the plate, and Flanagan is the pitcher. And looking at Mike Flanagan, you look at one of the mainstays of the Baltimore staff over the years. Flanagan is six and eight. He has had just one win in his last four starts, but he's pitched reasonably well. You might remember at the start of the year, he could only win one in his first 13 starts. So Flanagan, who was on the DL with tendonitis, finding it difficult to come back, but he's piled up uh, 135 wins in his brilliant career, and the O's hope that he'll get him back on track. Baltimore snapped a four-game losing streak last night. They are in fifth place, and they are nine back of the front running Red Sox. The Angels meanwhile are in first place four in front of Texas. There is certainly one common denominator between the two teams. Each team has had trouble with a solid leadoff man. The Angels have had seven different leadoff men and Baltimore has used eight. And here's Burleson. Hey. 
and promptly bangs the first pitch of the game into right field for a base hit. Dwyer up with it, so Burleson is aboard, and that will bring up Wally Joyner. Tough field line, even though Rayford, as we showed you, was playing in tight to protect against the bunt. And Burleson had no intention of dropping the bunt and beating it out. He was going to drive it. And now Joyner's up there with the man on first. He's got a nice gap between first and second to shoot for. One. Two and one. The count to Wally Joyner. Burleson at first. We're just starting out. Ground ball hit slowly to the right side to Gutierrez, and they get a four. So that's all they could do with that one. Downing hit a home run last night. He had gone a while since last hitting one. Three weeks, in fact. Perfect eight wins and no losses against Cleveland this year. But Cleveland has beaten Baltimore nine out of 13 times. I mean, there's the pennant race right there. One and two. Tried to time it, lifts a fly ball to Freddie Lynn, and going out is Gutierrez to make it. <laughs> to work on a former bird, Doug DeSensei. DeSensei was Brooks Robinson's successor at third base, and he did an excellent job, but he was traded to the Angels for outfield to Dan Ford five years ago in Baltimore. Well, they haven't had a third baseman since that the Orioles traded DeSensei. They originally thought they were going to put Cal Ripken at third. Halfway through the 82 season, they moved Ripken to shortstop, and third base has been a struggle ever since. A drive down the left field line for a base hit. Sheets over to get it. On his way to third is Joyner. The throw cut off by Ripken to second, not in time. George Hendrick. Hendrick. In the course of a game, guys will go up there and actually try and tear it out of there. They will tear it out. Yeah, I don't know how the umpires allow that. Three and one. Ground ball to the hole. Base hit. It means one. It means two. As DeSensei will score. And just like that, it is two to nothing, California. On the uh, base hit by DeSensei, you can see Ripken trying to make the play, at least knock it down. Once it got to the outfield, that was two runs. Kenny Rowe is going out to the mound, the pitching coach of Baltimore, to talk to Flanagan, a most inauspicious beginning for Mike. Yeah, but if you own the candy store, I mean, you have to stock it. Oh, I know I'm entitled to do it. But yeah. What I'm saying is, yeah. if I were E. Bennett Williams, as a great brain in law, how much baseball do I really know? I know who's in shipbuilding. Why does E. Bennett Williams... Part of it is ego. Part of it is the fact that the stature in the community almost commands it. I think... And that's going to command another shot, and Flanagan is on the ropes. Over to get it is Dwyer. Gritch digs for second. They'll stop Hendrick at third. The Angels, in the last two weeks, have really been getting a drop on the opposition in the first inning. Well, Dick Schofield coming up with runners at second and third. Now, hello to him is a paragraph, man. When you says hello, you got the whole load. <laughs> oh and two, the count really to Dick quiet. Schofield. Got him. So Flanagan finally muscles his way out with a fastball up and away. The Angels get two and lead two nothing at the end of half an inning. Well, the Orioles trailed by four runs in the eighth inning last night and turned it around. They trailed by two in the first inning, and here's the way they stack up offensively. Jackie Gutierrez at second base, followed by Freddie Lynn in center field and Cal Ripken at short. Eddie Murray is the DH with Jim Traber playing first, Jim Dwyer in right field, Larry Sheets in left, then you have Rayford at third and Stefaro behind the plate. Defensively, Downing, Pettis, and this is a good ballpark for him because you know how well he can roam. Henrik is in right field. The Sensei Schofield, a real magician around shortstop. You've got to like that young fella. Gritch at second base. Joyner at first base. Boone behind the plate. Oldest catcher in the major leagues. Leads the American League in games played and described by the pitching staff as the most informed catcher they've ever pitched to. He looks at videotapes, watches batting practice as we look at Chadwick. He doesn't have any trick pitches, and in talking to Bob Boone, Boone he says he's got a live arm, he's got the stuff, I just hope he can put that fastball where we want it. 
line to right field Hendrick coming in and almost fell down his feet skidded on him and it'll be a base hit he's replacing a divot like a good golfer look like he was going to try to make the play and then all of a sudden there goes his balance and he just waits for it and picks it off they had some severe rain here severe enough to rain out three games Wednesday and then a doubleheader Thursday but never trust a ball player yeah, that's right in fact, he said the way DeSensei plays him so far off the line, he thought about bunting last night. <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. Right. <laughs> three and two the count. Gutierrez goes. Strike three at the plate. Booney's throw. Got him. What a play. Booney has really been phenomenal with his percentage as far as throwing people out. 31 out of 60 now in real good shape and had something on it. Now, he gets the strike out of breaking ball. Did you see how quick he went into it? And I think the important thing is that he had both hands on that ball. Watch him. Both hands. No one hand catching there. And there you see it. I'll tell you, forget the birth certificate. He is still a good catcher. Now, two to nothing angels we're just warming up what hold everything his honor Earl Weaver is now out there to talk to Vic Voltaggio the third base umpire and evidently has spotted something that could be a distraction and it's in the area of the bullpen or maybe even further out towards center field there is a gentleman who was that gentleman with that white sports shirt and of course the hitter evidently complaining they had lost the ball in the shirt. Buddy an NBC cameraman <laughs> and he was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. We should have given him a build up. He could have had his own show. Right. It's the Buddy Joseph show. Uh, there he yeah. is. Come on buddy do five minutes. Wait till he finds out he's yeah hey. like hey, hey what, what did I want? do. What do you want from me. <laughs> Cal Ripken remember his streak. Over 6,500 consecutive innings. High drive into deep left field. Back goes Downing. She is gone. Look like a high fastball. And there it is, boy, right in the old down the middle, right in the kitchen. Well, it shows you. Cal Ripken went 16 games without hitting a home run. He hit one last night, and it's habit forming. He comes right back and jerks one out today, and it's two to one Angels. Marcel Latchman played a very quick visit to the mound. Well, he's had a very bad ankle. He's also had. A hamstring. He said just one home run in over well 24 games. We were talking about E. Bennett Williams before, and the boss got on him as well by also getting on Floyd Rayford. Cutouts on the corner. So it is three and two, and Eddie had already thrown his bat away. Who's become as big a story as crab cakes here? Now that's got to be ball four. Oh, did you see him yeah. getting that look? Why don't you call that a strike? Oh, he'll, yeah. he'll catalog that one. <laughs> Murray went on the disabled list. He had eight home runs and 22 RBIs in 17 games. A former quarterback at Oklahoma State. And he drives one into deep right center. Back goes Hendrick to the wall. Gone. And he really timed it perfectly. 32 RBIs in 32 games. As Vin said, a quarterback at Oklahoma State, he says, I like to be in the middle of things. Like a quarterback, if you win, they love you. If you lose, they hate you. He said, I like to be in the middle. And he certainly is on that one. In fact, once Traber sang the national anthem at Memorial Stadium. 
the night he made his big league debut last September the 21st. And he has sung the anthem before many of his minor league games. And he's at the lead in Oklahoma, so he's the spotlight is no stranger to him. He's quite a young man. Of course, they wanted him to sing again. He said, I came up with a play this time, not to sing. Right. Well, he is struggling. Young Ray Chadwick. That was a curveball, Ben. You can see how bad that was. It's just so much slower than this fastball and hardly broke. Don't overthrow. Be yourself. Give me the ball where I ask. And see what happens. Chuck Finley down in the bullpen. And of course, remember, Chadwick did not get out of the first inning in his last start. One strike. High fly ball into shallow left. Schofield was looking for Downing, and Brian is there. So Baltimore comes roaring back with three at the end of an inning. Three to two, Orioles. Check you the lead moving up and down the lineup from leadoff to the number eight slot where he is today. Oh and one. Curve ball hit to third right there to chew it up as Floyd Rayford. See where Rayford was saying now that he's been called back from Rochester he had a big hit last night. But Floyd was saying I really think my position is catcher. Yeah. Well here's Bob Boone who already made a play when he threw out Gutierrez. But he's been working with all of them, a tireless worker. And a drive to right center field. However, Dwyer got a good jump on the ball, made the play. Dwyer things off with a base hit to right field. He's been very hot, hitting around 330 for a month. Valuable. He's played second, short, third, and DH. Good man to have around. Hit a little looper right at second baseman Gutierrez, and that bat is broken and will never be used again. And at the end of an inning and a half, 3 2, Baltimore. The Orioles have won four of the seven games from the Angels this year. In fact, Baltimore hasn't lost a season series to the Angels since 78. So she had John 3 3 on, now she's got the Romans or something on. Mm -hmm, I see that. Two and one. Good fastball. And another one. Good fastball, that one. So Floyd Rayford strikes out, one away. Our bottom of the second inning. Slams in a game and lose. They hit them in the inning. Texas came back with one of their own to beat them, and down goes Stefaro. The catching Dempsey and Stefaro combined are under 200. It's not much production at all. No. Or with a single to right, but was doubled up when Fred Lynn struck out. Oh. He didn't want to swing at that no more than I did. It's eight straight times. Look oh. out. Oh, that had a hurt. That was a fastball, and he was drilled. Two strike count. He's going to overthrow it. And there's nothing Gutierrez could do but stand there and get hit. If you're going to get hit, that's where you want to get hit. It'll just hurt you when you go to the movies and have to sit down. 18. There goes the runner. The pitch outside, the throw, he's stolen it. He didn't have a chance to get him because uh, Chadwick never even looked. As he came set, he just came right to the plate, and Gutierrez had a walking lead off first base, and it was just a lack of concentration. Watch, though. Boone thought he had him anyway. He walked right away from home plate on the throw. There he goes. Yeah, he walked a good 15 feet away. He had no chance. No. A little ground ball to short. Back to get it is Schofield. A flip pulls Joyner off the bag. And look out now, that brings up Ripken with runners at first and third. Two out in the second inning, and Baltimore leading 3-2. Ripken hit a home run in the first inning. Chopper to Schofield, he'll go the short way to Gritch, and they get the force on Lynn, and that's that. So at the end of two, Baltimore three, Angels two, we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Reggie Jackson is 40 years old now. He came up to the big leagues in 1968 at Oakland. Played in 1976 for Baltimore and hit 27 home runs. And yesterday was inducted into a special club at the Babe Ruth Museum here in Baltimore, along with Frank Robinson, the, the 500 club. Those men who have hit over 500 home runs.
Babe Ruth, as you probably know, was from a Baltimore orphanage. And straightaway center, 405. Hard one at short, but Ripken is right there. So Joyner rolls out on a ground ball to Ripken, one down. And is struggling. In fact, it's interesting to see McGregor bypass for this series. That takes care of Downing. Ground ball to the hole. Ripken is up with it. And that's that. An easy inning, and Flanagan now on the beam has retired seven in a row, and it's 3-2 Baltimore. They have eight this year. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Show you how long and how far Baltimore has come in 1954. Baltimore didn't have anybody on the team who hit 10 home runs. That's the last team to have a quiet offense like that. Sounded like a busted bat. It is, and it's a flare for a base hit. Eddie Murray wound up with a handle in his hands. He just dropped it near home plate. Looked like a line drive tomorrow. Traber hit a home run in the first inning. Pops this one in the air back a shortstop. Schofield out. Downing coming up, and it's Brian Downing. Dwyer the right fielder with Murray at first and one out, and he pops it up. And it'll be Schofield for the second out. And he lifts a fly ball to right field. George Hendrick is there. A base hit and nothing else. And at the end of three, 3-2 three, Baltimore. Again in 1968. He has been kicked out of games 96 times. Three times this year. He's been kicked out of a spring training exhibition game. He was kicked out of a World Series game in 1969. He's been suspended six times. And he has been kicked out of both games of a doubleheader twice in his career. Otherwise, you'd never know he's around. <laughs> Hendrick, a little foul ball. Traber makes the play. Two runs in the first inning. The O's had two home runs by Ripken and Traber for three runs. There's a cracked bat and a ground ball to the right side to Gutierrez. He lost everything, including the batting glove, I think. I don't know what he's going to pick up. It looks like a batting glove popped out of there. Too much equipment. Oh, Sunglasses. Glasses. Yeah. Top of the cap. Now, what good are they up there? They just get in your way if you bend over, right? Yeah. That's not exactly heads up to wear your glasses up there. I mean, you're not wearing them, really, so why have them on? And Mike not going to work on Gary Pettis. A couple balloons out by second base, Gutierrez. <laughs> and, whoop, he just stepped on one. That's what Pettis is looking at. There you see the other one floating up. They didn't fall out of his pocket, did they? No. <laughs> okay, I didn't know whether he was having a party down there or what. <laughs> extension of his contract, and he's been under 500 since, so there are two fellows who mean a great deal to this ball club. There's a base hit to center, and stopping at second is grit, so we'll see if that error by Gutierrez is cashed in in this inning. You know one thing about that error, and a lot of times if you get the last out in the inning following an error, you say, well, he got away with it. But it's not true, because the error has an extra man coming up who would not be coming up except for your error and it's like giving somebody the extra swing I pop fly and it will be Ripken oh that's too bad that's too bad it should have been Gutierrez who could have brought his sunglasses down and caught the ball sometimes things just don't work out team at the conclusion of the ball game Rayford struck out in the second inning A one hopper and a nice stop by Schofield to get him. Boy, that thing was drilled. It's about, uh, hey, you only get 27 outs. I'm not going to give it up by giving, getting somebody thrown out or a bunt. He likes those three run homer strategy innings. That's an interesting point. There's a drive to center, but Gary Pettis is going to put that in the ball bag. By trying to get that three run home run, 
by disdaining the sacrifice, you have one big problem. You're going to ground into double plays. Remember, this is a ball club that doesn't run on him. Three and one. Fly ball to shallow right. George Hendrick is there. Six in a row retired by Chadwick. It's still three to two. Baltimore will be back after these messages from your local station. Counting Doug DeSense. There are the big guys in the ribbies. In the last two years, the Angels saw it get away in the final week. There's a little looper, and it'll go right to Gutierrez. Been super the last couple of months. 0-2 to Downing. On the hands, a little fly ball. Lynn hesitated, but he's going to pick it off. Say, single, grounded out. The Sensei and Gritch know what it's like. It's a high foul off third. Rayford almost fell down, but he now backs off for Ripken. They both looked away. And at the end of four and a half, 3-2 Baltimore. It's kind of a shock to see these three in the lineup. They are the core of the Baltimore attack. But he's been moving him in and out, in and out. He has not had a real good curveball. He's had no change of pace at all to speak of. And he got a hold of that one. A towering fly ball to right field. Hendrick in the corner. Gone. Up <laughs> home runs to Cal Ripken, to Jim Traber with a man aboard, and now to Freddie Lynn. And it is four to two Baltimore. And it looked like he never thought it was going to be anything but a fastball. Little dunker back at first base. Joyner can't get it. And since he falls down, Ripken's going for two, and he's out from me to you. Even though pretty fancy footwork by Cal, trying to avoid Schofield's tag. Ripken thought that and took off. Now watch what happens here. It's got English on it. Down goes Joyner. That's when Ripken makes the decision. But look at that ball. It was in his, near his elbow. And now Ripken stops his slide. He knows he's out by 40 feet. Now watch him stop his slide and try to tiptoe over him. But he got him. He got him with the back of the hand. Right there. With Chicago. Round ball to third. DeSense has time. Two out. But that pitch, that off-speed pitch, this kid's going to be tough. Well, here is Jim Traver, who hit a two-run home run in the first inning and flied to left in the third. But it's the, the Baltimore dugout that was hollering out at him. High drive to straightaway center. Pettis going back to the track. Leaping catch for the out. Saturday in the park, Mr. G and I have a question. Let's I go back to 1946. We're okay. talking about Doug DeSensei being right. so far off the line. You're the catcher for the Cardinals. Whitey Karowski is the third baseman. Ted Williams is the hitter. Where are the Cardinals playing? Well, that was the great shift that uh, Mr. Eddie Dyer put on our manager. Uh, Williams, uh, they wanted him to hit the ball uh, to the opposite field because he was, you know, such a great pull hitter. Mm -hmm. So uh, Karowski was over between short and third by himself. Everybody else is on the right side. Was Karowski as far off the line as DeSense is now? No. Wow. No, he was not. That's the point of the whole discussion. Yeah, but the point, can I tell you something personally about that? Yeah, pal. I got four your... hits in that game. Williams bunted. I thought I'd get a headline. Headline says Williams beats out bunt. How could you take the camera off Joe when he was giving us one of the highlights of uh, World Series history? Highlight of my life. Oh, my gosh. Why are they come, rude? Come to my house and George I'll show Frankel. you the film. Yeah, oh. George Frankel. Oh, what a And shame. his mother's watching, unfortunately, from a hospital bed, but oh, we I'm hope she's feeling that. better. But uh, Mrs. Frankel, you tell George never to do that again. Yeah. Talk. That's how they got George. Otherwise, he wasn't speaking to anybody. <laughs> two and two. Charlie O. Line drive and Rayford leaped too soon. I think Floyd was fooled on it, thinking the ball might be coming at him a fraction of a second sooner, and he was on his way down the ladder. Hendrick has just doubled, and Gritch up there two and two.
comebacker. Flanagan will hold Henrik. That takes care of Gritch. I was reading about the dog days of August. <laughs> That's based on astronomy. It's the name of the star that comes up in August. Pop fly, crack bat, coming over to get it is Jim Traver. That'll take care of Schofield. So two down, and Gary Fett is coming up. It's originally a star that appears in August, not, I think it's Sirius or Sirius, something like that. It's the dog star, and that's why they call August the dog day. Hmm. Now, are those cotton candy clouds or cerulean <laughs> blue clouds? <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> right. Oh, and one. The Stafaro's using, you can hear that ball pop in here. That was not a fastball. No, no, sounded off speed. Fast. Yeah. I don't know what he's, might have put some shoe polish in there to make it pop. Line drive. Great play by Gutierrez. But Jackie makes a great one, and it's still 4-2 Baltimore. Here's Jackie Gutierrez making a splendid play on that ball hit by Gary Pettis, and it saved a run from scoring and prevented the tying run from getting aboard. Now, as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, Gene Mark makes a move. Chuck Finley out of Monroe, Louisiana. He is only 23 years old, went to Northeast Louisiana State University. And he'll come in with a 1-0 record and pick up for Chadwick. One away. So Finley takes care of Dwyer. Larry Sheets will be coming up. Carter in the majors. An RBI every four and a half at bats. Three and two. Line drive down the right field line. Base hit in the corner. Hendrick going over to get it. And Big Larry goes steaming into second base with a double. Jeff Finley for starter Ray Chadwick. Two and two to Rayford. They're going to check. Swing, says Dave Phillips. And that takes care of Rayford. Seven teams. That year, they beat Baltimore 19 out of 22. There's a two hopper at second base, and Bobby Gritch will take care of Dempsey. So we've got six innings in the books, 4-2. Baltimore will be back after these messages from your local station. And it's hit into right field, so Boone opens up the inning with a single to right. And that means Burleson coming up as the tying run. Yeah. I had to look up his strikeouts in the ratio. Boone not going the last time, 3-2. And he's not going now. Line drive, a one hopper, backhanded by Rayford, down to second, to first, not in time. Oh, what a play by Floyd Rayford. Downing. High pop fly on the right side. It'll be Jim Traber calling, but Gutierrez has the ball come to him. Mike Flanagan, a tough customer, particularly at Memorial Stadium. He came into this game with six wins and eight losses, but his record at home, four wins and only one loss. Well, now he surrenders the ball to Rich Bordy. Bordy, a big guy. He is 6'7. And two to get it even. There's two out, a run in in the ninth, 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. Got him. So Brian Downing strikes out. Here's the big play that saved Baltimore's bacon by Floyd Rayford. It's still 4 2 O's. Here's another edition of the seventh inning stretch. A leg up on all the rest. Nolan Ryan of the Houston Astros continues to add to his record-setting 4,000 strikeouts. At age 39, the K's continue for baseball's all-time leading strikeout artist. 
five no-hitters, nine one-hitters, and 18 two-hitters for the Houston Astros Special K, Nolan Ryan. Four Olympics, it's a great family. Two and two. Down he goes. When I think of the 36 Olympics, uh, I think of Adolf Hitler and Jesse Owen. Here's how the scoring took place. Hendrick single picked up Joyner and DeCinza, and the Angels led two to nothing. In the bottom of the first, Ripken homered with the bases empty, and then Traber homered with Murray aboard. And then Lynn homered in the fifth inning. And the Orioles leading comfortably. Two and two to Freddie Lynn. Ground ball to the right side. Bobby Gritch is there. Two out in the seventh, and Cal Ripken coming up. Jimmy Williams coaching at first, and Cal Ripken Sr. coaching at third. Ripken with 19 home runs. Bouncer up the middle. but much more power as a left-handed batter. That's a good streak. Look at that. Yep, there it is. Man, it looks like the lottery numbers. They got him out once. He went four for five. Four for five and nine runs batted in. Got him. So Murray strikes out. They leave Ripken, and at the end of seven, Baltimore four and the Angels two. We're going to the eighth inning at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. The birds are leading the Angels four to two. John Shelby is now in right field for Jim Dwyer. So T-Bone is out there with Freddie Lynn and Larry Sheets. In the eighth inning. And Rich Bordy trying to nail it down for Mike Flanagan. Will that balloon be a factor? Ball one. Well, we do know a factor. If it's not the balloon, it was certainly that great play by Floyd Rayford in the seventh inning. And that's hit over the head of first baseman Traber and just inside the foul line. And Desense will hold a bloop single to right. Right off the end of the bat. You're Nothing about a wedge shot. Yeah. That's to the green. Down in the bullpen, and they're going to him. Now, Ozzie came in last night and retired three in a row. He has saved 30 games. He has a brilliant ERA of just two. A little history we mentioned on August the 5th Baltimore was two and a half games back of the Red Sox. Then they lost two games at home to Texas because of Texas late inning rallies against a bullpen that was without Ozzy. Almost like a basketball team. Fastball just by the diving Rayford and down to second base goes to Sensei. So first and second and that's three hits for Hendrick two singles and a double California two runs nine hits and we're in the eighth inning. Pop fly Gutierrez going out to get it and the runners have to hold. He played here in 1976. He hit 27 home runs, and would you believe he had a career high 28 stolen bases for Baltimore? The boy, though, against one who doesn't serve him up. High fly ball into shallow left center. Freddie Lynn is there. Reggie hit seven home runs the first six weeks of the season. 
and he has hit four home runs 13 weeks since. Fong for Gretsch, Jackson for Schofield, and here is Rupert. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out. There's the slow curve. Swing, says Voltaggio. About catchers checking hitters to make sure they don't peek back. Here's a good example of why you want to do that. Now, Dempsey gives a sign. You really don't know what it is yet, but watch his glove now. He'll start to motion down, down. There it is, right there. You know that's going to be a curveball. And there it is. And for the Elfong, who batted for Bobby Gritch, is at second base. Rupert Jones, who batted for Gary Pettis, is in center field. He singles, and Lynn with a home run. Almost got Traber at the kneecap. Three and two. Well, would you think he'd be looking for the ball inside. And he got one inside and pulled it into the seat. So it's still three and two. Three and two. On the hands, he is coming in on him. Boy, he really challenged him that time. On the hands, and he muscled it down the right field line. Fouls. So he's come in on him now three times. And another one at his chin. So you talk about pitching inside. Ball four to Traber. Don't forget, more exciting NFL preseason action coming your way. NBC Sports travels to Mile High Stadium. The Denver Broncos and John Elway against the Rams and Eric Dickerson. It's prime time preseason clash this Friday at 8 p.m. right here on NBC Sports. Baltimore came back with three. The O's added another in the fifth. And here we are in the eighth. The butt in the air at the feet of Finley who throws and gets a force at Burleson. So a 1-6 force play. And down goes Sheets. Of course, when you think about it, the glove has always played a part here, particularly at third base, especially when worn by Brooks Robinson. Yeah, Brooks, he could do it all, couldn't he? And takes a pretty good lead, doesn't go. And it's foul tipped, and that's that. That's the third time that Rayford has struck out. A half a dozen strikeouts to Finley, and it's still 4-2 Baltimore. 4-2 Baltimore, top of the ninth. Birds trying to beat California five out of eight this year. High pop fly, and it's Gutierrez, the second baseman. The wind blowing it. Wow. He seemed to be in control. I got it all the way. He does make the play, but down he goes. Quickie pop fly, and here's Burleson. Single, looped out, popped up, and then was robbed on the single most important defensive play of the game. By Floyd, that was smothered by Rayford. They had back-to-back -back singles leading off the eighth, so they've had their opportunities. Chopper over the mound, behind the bag at second is Ripken to get him. Ripken is on record as saying I may not be as flashy but what I do I study the hitters I study my pitchers I know the conditions and I position myself Joyner hit into a force play grounded out and popped up twice 0 for 4 just with the reality of blowing a four run lead last night that Jackie stayed with it to get him The totals for Baltimore, four runs, eight hits, and one error. And for the Angels, two, nine, and one. Flanagan gets the win. He is seven and eight. Five and one here at Memorial Stadium. And young Ray Chadwick is 0 and three. 
And a big moment, of course, for Floyd Rayford, who made the dazzling stop with a ball hit by Burleson in the seventh inning. And that really put the brakes to what might have been a game-changing inning. The home runs by Ripken, Traber, and Lynn. Ripken and Traber in the first inning, and Lynn in the fifth. So Baltimore, they're not well, but they're still alive. Oh, they're very much alive, very much alive. They are eight games back of the leading Red Sox. They still play Boston six more times. We'll be back after this. Two, part of the story would have to be the numbers two and three hitters in the respective lineup. The Angels, Joyner and Downing went 0 for 9. The Orioles, two and three hitters, Lynn and Ripken, went four for eight, including two home runs. And one of our guests right now is Cal Ripken. Cal, you have now played 6,572 innings. Are you tired? Uh, through the course of the season, uh, I do get tired at, 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 at times. Physically, uh, you're going to have your strong days, and you're also going to have your days where you're not going to feel so good. But I don't think it's those consecutive innings that make you tired. It just happens every single year, no matter if you're going to take off days or not. Steve Garvey finally stopped his streak. Dale Murphy got his streak snapped and said he was relieved that it was all over. Are you still intent upon keeping your string of innings, or do you think you'd be better off if you just got out of there a little while? Well, I'm intent to keep playing as long as I possibly can play. Uh, I talked to Dale Murphy at the break uh, at the All-Star game, and he said... Uh, that he didn't set out to play all those games in a row and uh, that's my feelings exactly I didn't set out to play 700 and some odd games in a row uh, it just happens that I've been very consistent I've been healthy and I've been able to do it uh, that's just the way the ad my attitude's been and that's the way it's going to continue Cal this is Joe hello Joe I, I, how you doing uh, I, I mentioned that you are not as flashy as a lot of shortstops, yet you get the job done because you spend a lot of time positioning yourself, knowing your pitchers and the opposition. What all do you do to get ready for a game in that regard? Well, a lot of times you look at their roster, their, their stat sheet. Uh, for example, I'll use Reggie as an example. When Reggie's swinging the bat very, very well, uh, he's not really just a full hitter. He'll drive the ball well to left center, and he'll drive the ball to my right as a shortstop. So if Reggie comes to town and I look at the stat sheet and Reggie's uh, swinging the bat very well, then I, I'm more apt to play him a little bit uh, uh, to my right uh, as opposed to if he's not swinging the bat well, he seems to be swinging it really hard, and he, and, uh, he seems to pull a little bit more. So that's one hitter. I'll look at the stat sheet and see who's hot and who's not. Uh, and the same goes for our pitching uh, pitchers. If we have a pitcher that's extremely hot and he's throwing the ball very, very well, then I'm more apt to rely on him uh, as opposed to a pitcher that's struggling a little bit. Do you get any help from anybody else in that regard? Well, uh, I try not to rely on too many, uh, too many other people. Uh, sometimes your information is not always correct when you ask other people. So I try to rely on my memory and, and what I know of, of certain hitters. But if there's ever a problem, and I, I really can't figure out a certain hitter, I'll go to my dad and say, well, what do you think? Uh, I, I seem to go to him more and more uh, about everything, hitting, fielding, uh, and positioning especially. Cal, as a veteran infielder in the big leagues, did anybody have anything to say to Jackie Gutierrez for wearing his sunglasses sitting on top of his cap when they <laughs> fell off there and really messed him up in the fourth inning? Well, I don't know that it was the sunglasses that messed him up and the fact that uh, it just took a little tricky hop on him and he caught it. I uh, never had quite uh, a good grip on the baseball. Uh, he wore sunglasses on uh, before on top of his head when he doesn't really need them. Uh, sometimes those sunglasses, when you put them over the, cross, the bridge of your nose and above your eyes, they block your vision just a little bit and he just happens to like to put them on top of his head. Uh, Potentially that could be dangerous. And yes. I don't think today necessarily that had a lot to do with that error, but uh, uh, maybe somebody will say something to him about it. It's maybe kind of a bad habit, isn't it? Uh, I wouldn't take the chance. Yeah. <laughs> Cal, quickly, give us a scouting report on Billy Ripken. Well, Billy's having a super year in uh, Charlotte, in our double-A farm club. Uh, he's been very consistent with the bat. Last time I looked at the stats, he was up around 290. And all the reports that have come in, he's playing a very, very uh, good second base. Uh, so we're all happy that he stayed healthy uh, for a full year and that his offense came around because we all knew that he could play defense, uh, second base, shortstop, or third base. Cal, I'm sure when you go back inside, you'll join your teammates and congratulate Floyd Rayford for making the big defensive play in the seventh inning. Well, Floyd's another one of those uh, defensive players that is very underrated. He's, he's very sure-handed. Uh, he doesn't look like the quickest person in the world from, from his parent, from appearance standpoint, but he's very quick. Uh, he's deceptively quick, and on that ball, he reacted so quick and, and made a nice dive in play. 
uh, and that was a big play in the game for us. Thanks, Cal, so very much for the visit. We appreciate it. Thank you. Next week, the Dodgers and the Mets or the Cubs at Atlanta on your World Series Network, NBC. From Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, where Baltimore defeated the California Angels 4-2 for Joe Garagiola, this has been Scully. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Hope you make your plans to be with us next week. Want to say goodnight to your bride? I'm, I'm going to say goodnight, but I'm making plans to be with you next week at Shea Stadium. And how to see the amazing Mets. And they'll go up against Tommy Lasorda's Dodgers. Others, of course, will see the Cubs and Atlanta down there at Fulton County Stadium in Georgia. Also a reminder next Friday night pro football preseason the Rams and the Broncos John Elway and Eric Dickerson that'll be a great show at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and next week we'll be talking to you from Shea Stadium in New York. Now from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore for Joe Garagiola this is Ben Scully reminding you that Baltimore defeated California 4-2 and wishing you a very pleasant good afternoon.